In this video, I'm helping you to derive the Kalman gain of a very special return forecasting model. So this video is an appendix to my video on applying the Kalman filter to the second simplest finance application. So the setup of consideration is as follows. At each point in time t, we have a measurement of r tilde t, which are the excess returns. Now we assume that they consist of two parts, mu tilde t and epsilon t. Now epsilon t is a Gaussian shock with mean zero and variance sigma square. That's the measurement error. Now mu tilde t is the ex ante expected risk premium. And we assume that it's unobserved and that it follows the following state equation where mu tilde t equals mu tilde t minus one plus epsilon mu t. Epsilon mu t is a Gaussian random variable, mean zero, sigma square mu as the variance. And if you look at the state equation, you see you could also say that the ex ante expected risk premium follows a random walk. Yeah, so tomorrow's value is just a random perturbation of today's value. Okay, so here's what we want to do in that video here. I want to show you that the optimal learning rate or the Kalman gain as of period one is nothing else than this following ratio here. So let's start. The learning rate K1 is defined to be the covariance over the variance, meaning the optimal learning rate is the projection parameter that you obtain when projecting the ex ante expected risk premium onto the realized measurement error. So note here that the new one is the difference between the realized risk premium and its ex ante expectation. So we substitute in the next step the new one in the variance operator with the following expression. Therefore, the term for K1 changes to the conditional covariance over the variance of the spread between the realized risk premium and the ex ante expected risk premium. Now note the conditional variance conditions on F0 information. So does the conditional expectation. Therefore, there's no randomness coming from that conditional expectation. We can therefore rewrite the optimal learning rate K1 as the covariance of mu1 tilde nu1 divided by the conditional variance of R1 tilde. So next, look at the denominator. You see that the conditional variance of the realized risk premium can be rewritten as the sum of the uncertainty that arises due to the unobserved ex ante expected risk premium and the variance of the measurement error. So the optimal learning rate K1 does therefore coincide with the following ratio. And now the denominator has already the expression that we wanted to get. Now it needs to be shown that denominator, so the conditional covariance between mu1 tilde and nu1 is just the same thing in our application than the conditional variance of the ex ante risk premium. So let's look at the left hand side more carefully and note the following. First, nu1 is linear in the realized excess return. Hence, we can rewrite the conditional covariance of mu1 and nu1 as the conditional variance of mu1 tilde with the spread of the realized excess return in time one minus its conditional expectation. Now the conditional expectation conditions on the same information than the conditional covariance, so it's non-random, doesn't create any co-movement. So we end up with seeing that the conditional covariation just boils down to the conditional covariation of the ex ante risk premium with the realized risk premium. Now second, now we write down the risks as of time zero for R1 tilde and for mu1 tilde because we want to see where the co-movement comes from. 
So let's start. Now the realized excess return in time one, conditional on F0, is the sum of two Gaussians. The first Gaussian arises from the ex-ante risk premium because its location is unknown or its value is unknown and we know the mean, we know its variance. And the second Gaussian is the Gaussian arising from the measurement error. Now, in the third step, let's look at the conditional distribution of the ex-ante risk premium. That one is also Gaussian. Now, therefore, finally, if you ask yourself, what is the reason for covariation of the last equation and the second last one, you note that it's the randomness that arises from not knowing the value for the ex-ante expected risk premium. So hence the covariance is simply the product of both standard deviations multiplied with the correlation, which in that case is simply one. Hence we found the relation that we were looking for, namely the conditional covariance between the ex-ante risk premium in period one and the realized measurement, uh, the realized prediction error in time one is nothing else in that example than the conditional variance of the ex-ante risk premium. So putting everything together, we have shown that for the return model, where realized risk premiums equal the ex-ante expected risk premium plus Gaussian noise, and the ex-ante expected risk premium follows that random walk with the Gaussian noise part, the optimal resulting learning rate in time one just equals that ratio here.